So as I hope you're aware, uh, in Python, we don't have very many functions built in. Um, and this is why we often have to go and import uh, additional functions uh, that we might want to use into our Python code. And a lot of the time, these additional functions we're importing aren't even built into the standard uh, library of Python. So um, when you install um, Python, you get a bunch of uh, extra modules that you can import. Some of those are, are what's known as the standard library that are always distributed with Python, um, no matter what version of Python you're using, um, or, or whether you're using Anaconda Python or whether you're using it on a, a Raspberry Pi or, or however you're using it. Those modules are the things that are all documented in docs.python.org. But then there are also additional third party packages that we use. Um, and some of those we, we use an awful lot. Those, so things like NumPy and SciPy and Matplotlib. And that's why uh, if you use our recommended uh, distribution of Python, Anaconda Python, it comes pre-installed with a lot of those packages you might need to go and use um, uh, in your own code. So it comes with NumPy already installed, so you're just able to go and do uh, import NumPy as NP, and the same with SciPy and Matplotlib. But sometimes we find that the set of packages that Anaconda have installed for us by default doesn't quite do everything we want to go and do it, and we need to add an additional uh, package in. And one of the great things with something like Anaconda, uh, these sort of Python distributions, is there are literally thousands of extra packages that you can go and use to help um, uh, add extra functionality to what you're doing with your coding. So what I'm going to show you today is how to go and add one particular package, which is very useful uh, when we're working with plotting in uh, Jupyter Lab. And it's a package called IPYMPL, IPYMPL, and it enhances the way that plotting works uh, in, in Jupyter Labs. So um, if you uh, uh, got your Anaconda running and you open up your Anaconda Navigator, the kind of easiest way is to use the, the point and click interface, the GUI interface of Anaconda Navigator. There are also command line options for doing this. And if you look online for instructions, they'll usually talk about a, a command line program called Conda, uh, which you can use to do the same thing. But I'm going to show you how to do this with the, um, with the GUI of the Anaconda Navigator. So all you do is just go over to the environment uh, section on the tab on the left. Um, and this has a what looks like a slightly complicated display. So in Anaconda, um, it's not in fact just to go, that you just install one uh, Python. You can in fact have many different parallel Python set up with different combinations of packages and different combinations of versions of Python. Uh, and that's a good thing because it can be that if you're working on a particular project and you need some uh, particular packages and particular versions, you can create a um, an installation with just the version of the packages you need and just the version of Python you need. And you can run that separately from uh, what you're running on your everyday version of Python coding, or you can have multiple in, uh, of these environments set up, each one of which is set up for working on a particular project. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just modify what's called the base environment. So that's the one that we we use kind of um, to run the, the, the programs like Jupyter Lab and Spider in usually. So in this middle section here, it says base brackets root, and that's the one we want. Uh, and then we're going to come over here and we are going to, at the moment it's going to show us a list of all the things that it's got installed. Um, and you can see there's there's an awful lot of them. I won't scroll through all of them. Um, and I'm just going to change this from installed to um, uh, not installed. In fact, we can do all. All's good. <clears throat> and then this is the list of the thousands and thousands of packages that you could install. And we are going to search for the one we want, which is IPYMPL. And it comes up like this. And it says it's a matplot, matplotlib Jupyter extension. Um, and this is going to be something that's going to let us do some additional um, uh, features when we're doing our plotting on our Jupyter uh, uh, notebooks. So um, I click on it, it gets a little down arrow, and I go down to the bottom and I click apply. And it's now going to go and work out uh, whether it needs to install anything else as well in order to make everything work correctly. Um, so this process can take some time. Um, 
So just in case it does, I'll pause here. OK, and after a minute or so uh, on the virtual Windows desktop, it may well be faster on a cluster machine or on your own laptop. It works out that, no, it just needs IPI MPL itself. And so we can just hit apply. And it now shows you the progress bar down the bottom. And again, it usually takes a minute or two for it to go and do this. So we'll just pause here. OK, and then eventually it decides it's finished and uh, it'll show us a green tick there. OK, so that's all we need to go and do to add this extra package in. So now to show you what it is we've actually managed to do why we've done this, I'm just going to go back to home and I'm going to launch uh, Jupyter Lab. OK, so what's called our Jupyter Lab uh, set up? Um, and in fact, I've got a little bit of code um, uh, set up here already um, that I wrote previously. Um, and the uh, new magic line is going to be um, this very first cell. Uh, and then we're also going to show what actually happens when we don't, by default, I'm in fact going to go and um, miss that out and just execute the other lines. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of a, a, of a quick and dirty trick here is I'm importing um, everything from the matplotlib pylab module. This actually imports uh, all of NumPy and the matplotlib functions as well. And I do it just to make it a little bit faster to write the code for you. Um, so I've got some code here. Um, so let's just go and execute this. So we do our import. And then I can run that. And you can see it plots a sine wave. And that's fine. Now, imagine that, OK, you've done that and you think, oh, yes, actually, what I wanted to go, I wanted to go and add, um, say, an X label to it. So I do X label. Um, let's give it an X label. Close bracket seconds and go, right, let's do that. And you go, oh, it's not labeled the axis I've just drawn. It's going to label a whole new set of axes. I didn't want to go and do that. And this is one of the the problems with Jupyter Lab as it's set up is that you have to do all of your plotting commands within the same cell. So if I'd simply gone and taken that label and put it in the first cell um, and then run that first cell, it would have labeled it just fine. But because I'd forgotten to put the label in, um, it it then creates a new set of axes. Of course, that gets really annoying. I mean, OK, labeling is, is is easy. You can just put it back in the cell again. But if you imagine that I had several very complicated calculations in order to generate different curves, and I wanted to add them onto the same set of figures, it, it just gets a little bit annoying to go and do that. So this is where this new line comes in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just restart my kernel because that magic line that's in that first cell has to be the very first thing that gets executed. Um, and I can, in fact, also, let's just clear all outputs. So we start from scratch. And now I'm going to go and execute that cell first. OK, so it's run. Now, it's not very obvious what's happened here, but um, it's going to take the extra line back out again. Now let's go and run that cell. And OK, you can see it looks a bit different. Um, and the first thing you notice is when you hover over it, you suddenly get this toolbar here, which includes things like a arrow that lets you shift the plot around. Um, you can also, if I go to this one, I can zoom in on part of the plot. Um, when I get hopelessly confused, I can go and go back again. Um, and I can also go and download the plot as a graphics file, which is super useful. OK, so that's good. But here's the next trick we can do. If I now re-execute this cell, then you see it's added the X label onto the existing plot. Until I start a new plot figure, I, everything I do with the matplotlib uh, commands are going to work on this existing set of axes. Um, and so if I want to add another uh, line, for example, I could do uh, plot x comma 
I don't know, let's have cos three times x. Um, and let's give that a label. And there we go. You see, I've just added an extra curve to the same set of axes. Um, and we can add a legend, which adds the, the cos label. The reason the first curve doesn't have a legend entry is because I didn't give it a label. So it doesn't have a legend entry. So the great thing with the IPI uh, MPL um, plugin uh, uh, package is it lets you use this percent matplotlib widget at the start of your, your cell. Um, whenever you see a percent sign, it's telling you it's a bit of um, Jupyter Lab magic going on. Um, and there's various things you can do to um, uh, invoke different sorts of additional functionality, which you get with the percent commands. But this particular one is telling it to um, use the uh, the widget. The default behavior you get by using inline. So if I was to restart the kernel um, and then clear all outputs. <clears throat> now, if I was just to run the inline, then you say everything goes up as it as it would have done beforehand. It puts everything in separate. Every cell has to have a separate plot window associated with it. And it, it generally doesn't do what you'd what you'd hope it to go and do. So um install the IPI where IPI MPL package and then you get the widget. Um if you try uh, not resetting the kernel, it will probably yes, it just won't do anything. Oh no, it's it's managed to do that. Okay, it used to be the case that it would give you an error if you tried switching it from inline to widget without restarting the kernel, but that's okay, it's working fine. Um, oh, and you see also that there's a, you can stretch your plots bigger or smaller as well, which is handy. Um, so that's a great little extra package to put in, um, particularly if you're using uh, JupyterLab on your own laptop, um, then I would strongly recommend that you install the IPI MPL uh, plugin. Uh, package into your uh, Jupyter, into your Anaconda Python, so that then you can just do this in, in your own coding. Um, if you're on the clusters and you're installing from apps anywhere, it's a right pain because you have to install the extra package every time you log into the machine, which um, is somewhat less um, less nice to have to go and do.